Welcome to the Boosting Business Breakthroughs podcast, where coaches gain the confidence, motivation, and expertise to make their next business breakthrough. I am your host, Lori Young, certified master marketer, business growth coach, and all around truth teller. Breakthroughs can come with flashes of absolute clarity, sudden shifts in mindset, learning new skills, changes in habits, or anything else that changes the course of your coaching business. So if you're ready to be inspired and break through to your next level of growth, let's go. Okay, welcome back to episode 13 of the Boosting Business Breakthroughs podcast for coaches. I have Casey uh, with us today, and today we're going to be talking about the importance of developing systems in your business. But then we're going to take it one step further, and we're going to talk about a robust project management tool called ClickUp and how we can use ClickUp to actually automate all of these systems and help increase your uh, efficiency and ultimately your revenue. So I am going to let Casey introduce herself. Um, but she is a systems and click up expert. But why don't you uh, share a little bit about your story, Casey? Yeah, of course. Um, first of all, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be chatting today. Um, but my name is Casey Ackerman and I am a ClickUp and systems expert. I've helped over a thousand business owners um, organize their business with systems and ClickUp. Um, I started my business in 2020. So when the world shut down, yeah, I was, like the pandemic. Yeah, I was I was furloughed and I didn't like that feeling. And so I was like, what can I do? And I quickly um dove into this crazy online space that we have. Yes. <laughs> that um, is it. Uh-huh. And by the time they wanted us to come back, which was roughly about three months, I had replaced that income already. And wow. so I said, no, thanks. I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Um, and now, you know, three years later, my business is amazing and the life that it provides me is amazing. And my husband, um, and yeah, it's just been a whirlwind, <laughs> but a good one, you know? <laughs> right. Uh huh. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, the first question I always like to, uh, ask guests, uh, is tell me about a business breakthrough that you have had in your business that actually kind of changed the course of your business it can be small, big, whatever. Yeah. Um, so this happened in 2021, January of 2021. Um, okay. and so I was roughly, I think about nine months into my business and, mm -hmm. um, long story short, my business blew up overnight. Wow. Okay. And in January I had all of these leads in my inbox, which is a great problem to have, but I was so overwhelmed. I didn't want to even like have a call with any of them. Mm. <laughs> um, I actually resulted in crying on my couch <laughs> to my husband. And so like, it's a great problem, right? To right, have all exactly. that. But the breakthrough that happened was actually what I specialize in now, um, which was bu is building systems, building out a automated project management tool um, to allow me to serve all of those leads, um, okay. to allow me to be able to say yes, you know, if they're a good fit um, and have the capacity and not feel like I'm drowning all the time. Um, right. So that was like really a big pivotal point for me. In 2020, I did become a certified OBM. And so I had like training under my belt around um, online business management and stuff. But then like 2021, it was just like, boom, ready to roll. Um, and I didn't know what to do. Right. <laughs> so I took like the first, the first quarter of the year, my, my virtual assistant and I, and we banged out systems for my business. And I was like, I'm never letting this happen again. I don't want to feel that way again. I don't want my team to feel that way ever. Um, I want our business to be a well-oiled machine. Right. And that was a huge pivotal point for me. And ever since we took the time to do that, mm -hmm. my business, like I said, has grown exponentially and is thriving while my team and I work maybe 20 hours a week. Awesome. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So let's just talk about systems because, you know, I serve coaches and oftentimes I'm a certified OBM as well. Even though I work in the digital marketing space, I still have that background. And we can do a lot with that. <laughs> yes, you can. I mean, obviously we've built out all of our marketing systems. We help our clients build out their marketing systems. Yeah. So it is 
it's super, super important. But mm -hmm. I want to hear from you, just kind of like, tell us about systems and why you need those in your business. Yeah. Um, so first of all, you don't want to be crying on the couch. <laughs> yes, true. But, um, but in reality, so the reason you want systems is because you want to stop working more in your business and want to start actually pulling away. And that doesn't mean that you are devaluing your business or that you're devaluing the services that you're offering, but it allows you to bring in that time freedom that we all talk about, right? And financial freedom, because if you don't have those systems, you're going to come to a cap. You're going to get maxed out on clients. You're going to get maxed out on your income. You're going to get mm -hmm. like stagnant in your business growth because you don't have systems in place to allow you to bring on somebody to support you in those systems. Um, and so that's why I feel they're so important because um, we talked about this before we started recording, but I have a baby on the way in January mm -hmm. and I want those systems to support me with this baby. Like I right. don't want to feel like I have to pick one or the other. Right. Um, and so thinking about that, and I always talk about too, like systems are important for your business, but also like in your personal life. So once you start to see the time freedom, you don't mm -hmm. have to put that time back into your business. You can put it elsewhere. You can put it into your family. You can put it into vacations. You can put it into volunteering at your kid's school. It doesn't have to be in this idea of, oh, I have these extra 10 hours a week. I have to like do something in my business now. You don't have to do that. If you're right. super content with how your business is being ran and the revenue that you're at and you want to like kind of stay there for a little bit. Mm -hmm. You don't have to just jump, you know, to the next goal over and over and over. You can actually use that time in whatever way you want, personal or business. And I like to mention that because I think in this space, we're always just like goal, 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 goal. And right. we're never like just breathing, you know, like mm -hmm. stopping and smelling the roses, you know, like, so thinking about what you could do outside of your business too is really important. Um, and also knowing that with those systems, if you're volunteering at your kid's school, there's nothing that is going to happen during that time frame that's going to cause your business to go up in flames, you know, because right. you have those systems, your team knows what's expected of them, when they need to do what they need to do with those SOPs, everything is there for them. And so it's a very worry-free um, situation for you and your team. So... <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit about, you know, so you, like you said, you've helped like a thousand business owners, you know, implement uh, systems in their business. Let's talk about some of the most common systems that you set up in a business first to help give them this freedom you're talking about. Yeah, I would say the first, the top three are going to be your onboarding system, mm -hmm. your client or service delivery system. And then also your team management system. So those three, even if you're doing them manually, having a system with a written process is going to free up your time because anytime you have to do those, you're not trying to reinvent the wheel. You're not trying right. to remember what you did last time. Um, so even if we are at the stage of like, okay, I'm going to have these written, but I don't really have anything automated yet. That's okay. Because mm -hmm. it's already saving you time. Um, and going to allow you to get things done faster. So right. those are the top three that I would say, like, focus on first. Okay. Yeah. Just to give a little bit of an example <clears throat> of how this uh, how this can work. And, and we'll get into ClickUp in a minute. But when I first started my podcast, you know, uh, for anyone who has ever, like, started a podcast, you know that there's a ton of steps that goes into actually managing a podcast. You know, you've got to research guests, you've got to bring on guests, you've got to create a smooth onboarding process for that guest. Then you have to figure out how you're going to market each episode. If I did not have a system in place for that, it would be so chaotic. Yeah. And between me and my VA, you know, we like, I literally wrote out the entire system from beginning to end before we even started uh, finding yeah. guests. And I, I want to make a good point here too. Not only is it chaotic, it's going to stop happening. You're going to, at some point, 
stop your podcast because Mm -hmm. it's too chaotic. It's too stressful. It's too overwhelming. And you get to the point to where like, oh my gosh, I don't even have an episode recorded that's supposed to go out tomorrow. And then you're like, oh, I'll just skip this week. And then next week. And the next week. (laughs) And so it, it turns into these big lulls of like nothing. And then you gear up again. You're like, all right, I'm going to do this. And then the overwhelm and the chaos creeps in again. And then you go back into that lull of not doing anything. And and like you can see it in patterns. And actually podcasting is a great example because you can see that happening. And I can guarantee they probably don't have a system because you'll mm-hmm. see some, you'll see a podcast with episodes, you know, for a couple months and then nothing for months and then a couple months and then nothing. Right. They probably don't have a system in place. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So how do you, because you and I, of course, have probably a very systematic brain. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have training in doing systems. How do you advise like business owners that have no systems mentality actually start to get like their first system like down yeah. on paper? So this is probably an unpopular opinion. <laughs> okay. But um, hire somebody. Okay. That's that's honestly my first and the only reason I say that I've actually putting I put out content about this because as business owners if you don't have that really, you know, system oriented brain and you're like a really big visionary and you have all these amazing mm-hmm. ideas you are you are going to put systems on the back burner over and over and over again. Right. And the amount of time it would take you to try and figure out how to build a system is probably not as cost effective as hiring somebody to help you, you know, pull out, extract the information from you and build them. Now, obviously that costs money and, Mm -hmm. you know, not everybody has the funds to outsource and hire somebody. So if you really are trying to go that DIY route, um, start with a brain dump and start with one system. Don't, don't try and like take all the systems in your business and say like, I'm going to write all these systems right now take one. So right. think of like, like I said, those top three and probably the easiest one would be is your onboarding. Mm-hmm. So take the onboarding and, and literally brain dump every single step that has to be done from finish to start. So start backwards. Start backwards. Um, okay. Yeah. That actually really helps the process. Cause you're like, okay, what has to happen so that I can actually complete this thing? rather than trying to go um trying to go from start to finish cuz you'll forget steps. Right. So start from the bottom and go up and then figure out if you can bring in support for that of like and with SOPs and somebody else to help you with that if you're going that DIY route. But if you do have the funds, I highly highly suggest in investing in somebody mm-hmm. because they're going to get what you want done in a fraction of the time that it would take you to try and DIY that, especially if you don't have that systems oriented brain. Um, and I don't have the creative brain. So it's not like just because you don't have this, this type of brain means that, you know, there's something wrong. There's nothing like that. We just all work differently and we all have different specialties and that's why I'm not a coach. And that's not why I'm not a digital marketer because I'm not good at it. (laughs) (laughs) But if you want me to build a system for one of them, I got you. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's say that, uh, a, you know, a coach has a system for their onboarding, like the onboarding new clients you're talking about, right? Yeah. Okay. So they have the system kind of in, uh, you know, on a piece of paper, right? Mm-hmm. What next? Like we've talked about ClickUp and why don't we just give the listeners a quick uh, definition or not definition, but just quick explanation of what ClickUp is. Yeah. I'll give you uh, two, one for ClickUp and one for Dubsado, because I will mention that one as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so ClickUp is a project management tool to help you manage your tasks, your team, your client delivery, all of those pieces. Um, if you're familiar with Monday, Trello, Asana, Basecamp, Notion, that is what ClickUp is. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I will probably mention Dubsado, which Dubsado is a client relationship management tool. Mm-hmm. And I firmly believe in having both. Mm-hmm. Um, they serve two very different purposes where Dubsado is going to take care of your entire client journey, um, and going to automate your entire client journey, which is right. where we're moving from paper to the tool, <laughs> right? 
<laughs> you know, um, so Dubsado and Dubsado is the same as like Honeybook or um, 17 Hats or anything like that. If you're familiar with any of those, then it's kind of the same idea right there where they're going to cover your invoices, your proposals, your contracts, scheduling, um, where a project management tool can't do those things. And so it's right. really important to understand you do need both. Mm -hmm. I would say that's probably the number one question I get is why do I need both? <laughs> so I love just explaining like you have, you need both of them. I promise. <laughs> yes. I, I mean, I'm happy to say that I have both. I have Dubsado and I have ClickUp. Yeah. <laughs> and Dubsado to me is kind of like the beginning stages yeah. So it's like, you know, someone books, you know, it handles your scheduling. So someone books a call with you. It goes into Dubsado. Uh, you know, I actually, you know, I use kind of Dubsado and ClickUp together. So what happens for me is, you know, a new call comes in. I actually use the, uh, what is it? The Google extension to uh -huh. add that directly into ClickUp so that I know, okay, I have a discovery call coming up. Then I schedule it to do a little bit of research, but they work kind of hand in hand. Yeah, but they you do. You do your proposals, you do your contracts. Um, you know, if you're using Dubsado for billing, you use that for billing. And then, like you said, ClickUp is used more for kind of after the fact, like you bring the new client on and now you are, uh, you go through a whole, like for me, I have a whole like onboarding system in ClickUp that yep. step by step by step by step that I go through to onboard a new client once they become a client. Yes. And there's, so um, there's things too that like Dubsado can't do which is what you probably have in your list on ClickUp of like, you know, the things for mm -hmm. that client. Um, something like sending them a gift, you know, like a, a welcome gift. Obviously, Dubsado cannot automate that. Right. So we have that in our ClickUp as well. We also have like prepping for the client. So we review the forms. We fill out the strategy call that has to go on um, that we're going to be kicking off. We fill in like I focus a lot on VIP days and VIP weeks. So we go through and prep that entire thing a week before um, the day with the client. And so mm -hmm. we have everything ready to go. And all of that is in ClickUp with um, assignees and due dates and it populates on its own. Like, so that's where we're talking, like you have this piece of paper of all this stuff. And then like, we got ahead of ourselves, but now we have right. like even automations, you know, like set up. <laughs> Right. So let's talk about, yeah, let's talk about these automations and yeah. how we can use ClickUp to automate. Yeah. So ClickUp has in-house automations and also um, integrates with, with Zapier or Make, I think is another one, or Integromat, um, whichever one you want to use that integrates with all of them. And it is fantastic because even if you're a solopreneur, even if you only have one team member, these automations not only help decrease like the overwhelm, but it also saves you a ton of time in handoff. So for instance, you can set up an automation where um, your team knows that it's their turn on a, pro on a task. So for instance, mm -hmm. it, let's say you, the business owner, writes an email, but then your VA is going to take it and format it and put it into your email platform system, send that test off, check the links, all of that kind of stuff. When you change the status... ClickUp will, you can set an automation where ClickUp will automatically notify that your virtual assistant that this is ready to be processed. Oh, wow. And That's cool. So you're not having to sit there and assign it to them and tag them and all this kind of stuff. ClickUp just does it for you. And so that's, that's one of them. Um, mm -hmm. Another one is you can, so like if somebody signs a specific contract in Dubsado, mm -hmm. you can use Zapier to kick off the project in ClickUp. So it will automatically create either a list or a folder with your template. So if you build out a template, you can automatically have that created. And um, we use that all the time um, so that we don't have to remember to do it. We don't right. have to, you know, like there's no more question of like, was this done or wasn't it done? It's already taken care of behind the scenes, like in our sleep, you know? Right. And Talking about onboarding automations, I love talking about this because when a client says that they want to work with you, the mm -hmm. last thing you want is to be like, oh yeah, I'll get to that on Monday. 
And then by Monday, they've probably changed their mind. And they're right. like, oh, they thought about it, you know, and they're like, well, do I really need to spend the money? Da, 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 you know? Right. So having these automations in place, you don't have to worry about it if they're like, oh, I'm ready to work with you. And it's Saturday at, on, at noon and you're, you know, at the pool with your kids. Mm-hmm. You're not like stressed out trying to run to your computer, getting the kids home because you got to put together this contract and invoice where when you have these pieces automated in Dubsado, the moment that they accept that proposal, it gives them the contract, it gives them the invoice, it gives them the next steps. Mm-hmm. And you can just enjoy whatever you're doing on that Saturday while they work through that process. And you just get to reap the benefits of getting the email saying like, oh, cool, they paid their deposit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So like, taking that stress and overwhelm out of your business and out of yourself. Right. Not only gives you the time freedom, but also gives you like the mental freedom and clarity of like not stressing all the time. Exactly. Yeah. And I think another thing that is worth mentioning because I've worked with coaches, for instance, that had VAs, the VA didn't work out Mm -hmm. and I've had to help them transition to a new VA. If you don't have your systems in place, it is a nightmare. Right. So let's talk a little bit about that. Like what happens when you don't have systems in place and you either one, you're going from being solopreneur to now bringing on a team member. Mm Mm-hmm. And you have to, somehow or another, this team member has to figure out, what do I need to be doing? They have to read your mind. (laughs) (laughs) Or you're one step further. You've brought on a team member, a VA, for instance, uh, she quits or she's not working out and you need to bring on another one. Right. Right. So this is another um, maybe unpopular opinion, but I'm really good at being honest. <laughs> I like, I love it. I love it. So am I. It's your fault. Mm-hmm. It's not the team members. Right. And the reason is because you did not set them up for success. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that this team member would have worked out, you know, if you had all those systems in place, but if you set them up with success, you have your systems in place, even if you don't have automations and you're still doing things manually, they at least have a process to follow. Right. They have SOPs where if they have questions, they can read this SOP, they can watch a Loom video, they have all of the passwords that they need. Everything is in one place for them to understand how to do their job. Their tasks are outlined with due dates, doing all of that. And then the, and then the virtual assistant not working out, that's no longer on, on the business owner. That is now the virtual assistant, you know, something is a disconnect there and it's not a good fit. Right. But if you don't have all of those things, the virtual assistant literally has no idea how to support you. Right. And they are spinning their thumbs, you know, because they're just like, well, I want to help you, but I don't actually know what to do. So I guess we can have a meeting every single day and you can give me a task list, which is far more overwhelming on both ends of that situation. And so if you, this is what I, sorry, this is what I um, always recommend is if you are about to hire and you've never hired before, this is your first time, take the five top tasks that you want support with Mm -hmm. and make sure, make sure you have a system and an SOP for those tasks. And then what I like to do is put in the job description that they're going to continue helping me build more SOPs. Meaning I can give them a Loom video and one of the tasks will be how to build an SOP, right? which is an SOP. (laughs) And they can follow that and understand how they need to write out the steps, how they need to do all of it. And then if they have questions, because, you know, as the business owner too, when you go through a Loom video and try and record something, oftentimes you're skipping steps because it's all in your head and you, you know, exactly like, Oh, do this, do this. And they're like, wait a second, how'd you even get where you're going? So they're able to extract even more info from you by asking those questions of, you know, I don't understand in this part of the video, how you got there. So I love putting in the job description. Um, if you don't have all of your SOPs with a virtual assistant, that they're going to continue helping build that SOP library with you. Right. Um, but at least have like 
your five core tasks mm-hmm. um, ready to go for them to support you. And also it's really important to know what you actually want support with. You can't just say, I need a virtual assistant. Right. Okay. What's for what? I don't know what that means. Right. <laughs> right. Right. There's so really understanding. And again, this is where a brain dump comes in amazingly. Um, I usually recommend clients to write down what they do every 15, 20 minutes for at least three days. Set a little timer if you need to. And then you can go through and highlight stuff of like Mm -hmm. stuff that doesn't make you any money, but has to get done stuff that you hate doing stuff that you wish you got done, but continues getting pushed, you know, on the back burner, all of those tasks, you now have a job description, Mm -hmm. all of those tasks, you now have a reason to hire a VA, you now have a reason to build those SOPs. Um, And then also if a, if a virtual assistant quits and you need to hire another one, I totally understand needing to hire another one because that virtual assistant was doing stuff for you. Right. But again, at least record some Loom videos and then have them write out that process for you because you are going to more than likely keep going through virtual assistants every three months or so. Right. Because you have nothing in place. Right. And another thing that I like to do when you write out those systems, let's say it's for the first time. Mm -hmm. I always say, at least to my VA, let's do a test run on this. Oh, yeah. Because that's where you find the holes. And like you said, the the steps that the business owner might have missed that were in your head Mm -hmm. or just like, I mean, I know as when we put together this process for the podcasting, it's like there are so many steps Mm -hmm. Now, when we start to actually go through this process and do it step by step by step by step, what's missing? Because inevitably with a large system, you can miss steps. And so then you you have to be in the mindset of like, we've got to get this right. Make sure you put this step in. Um, One of the things that I... I really, really love about ClickUp, and maybe you can talk about this a bit. You had mentioned it, but I don't think people fully get it if they're not working with ClickUp, and that is the ability to use a template or a checklist. Yeah. Yeah, those um, are lifesavers. Yes. (laughs) So I don't know that I do anything without a template anymore. Right. (laughs) Um. And that goes through like your launching, your team onboarding, your hiring, um, all of that can be templated out in ClickUp and allow you to load that template, make any changes that are needed and be done. And right. think about the, think about this. I like using a launch as an example, a launch can be, and this is like even talking just a very basic launch. Mm-hmm. It could be probably 60 tasks Mm -hmm. at least of the stuff that has to happen. And think about for a second, if you, every time you launch, let's say you launch twice a year, but even that twice a year, you literally type in all of those tasks manually every time and you manually assign people and you manually set the due dates and you manually, manually like, you know, add notes here and there or whatever. Think about if you could, save that as a template. And every time you just upload that, right. And you just say, use template and you click it and it's done. It loads the tasks for you. It has assignees set already, um, based off of, you know, your team members and responsibilities. And also I use a feature in ClickUp called remapping due dates. And okay. so it actually even sets the due dates for us based off wow. of the, based off of either the start of the launch or the end, whichever you want to use. Um, and so it like, I can plan a project, an entire project, like a launch, a VIP day, a VIP week, whatever you want to do in less than a minute. Wow. And think about if you were to do all that manually. Yes. The amount of time. The amount of so time. Temp- templates alone. And I'm not talking copy paste. I'm talking like ready to roll templates where you don't have to change anything. Right. Um, I'm not talking like you're copying it from an old launch and then you have to change all the details of it and all this. I'm talking like we have a saved master template in ClickUp and we upload that. 
um, that is where like things start to get really exciting. <laughs> oh, it sounds exciting because I, I mean, yes, I use ClickUp and I would say I'm probably, uh, I don't know, C plus B minus user of ClickUp yeah. because when I hear you talk, I think, oh, wow, it does that. Okay. Like, obviously I don't, <laughs> I am not like an expert in ClickUp like you are. Uh, and there's, I, I definitely use templates. I definitely use checklist with my podcast, just with the guest management. Mm -hmm. I literally just choose podcast guest template. It dumps all of the tasks in. It literally takes me like a minute just to yeah. process like yeah. the whole thing. It's just like, oh my God, this is so much, so easy. Yeah, uh, but exactly. gosh, when I hear you talk about it for launch launches and because yeah. ugh, I do launches and so launches are a beast mm -hmm. and like, I don't, I've never used the feature that it actually maps out the due dates for you. Like amazing. Yeah. Obviously yeah, I need to hire you. <laughs> <laughs> and you can also give client experience inside ClickUp too, which is really cool. Um, so I help a lot of agencies um, and one of the things they talk about is how they always want to up level their client experience. Okay. And what's really cool, I'm going to use a podcast agency as an example. Mm -hmm. You can build out client views where you don't have to add them into ClickUp. So it's not like, you know, you're adding guests and paying for them, all that kind of stuff. You can set up a client view that is a special link that they use and they can see all the statuses of their podcast or all the statuses of like their marketing um, posts that are being processed. And they, and it's just so nice because there's no more questions. There's no more emails. There's no mm -hmm. more, Hey, what about this? Or Hey, this, or Hey, that. And it's all set up where they fill out a form inside ClickUp for their podcast. And the moment the form is filled out, it's automated where it uploads the tasks and assigns the people. It's all done. Completely right. done. Um, so there's like a whole client experience you can add to ClickUp where it's automated. And there's right. no more. We send out automated emails to clients um, in, the, in the agencies where wow. it's like, if you don't have your podcast submitted to us by X date, it may not go out. <laughs> you right. know? Like, so it's really cool too, because now you're allowing ClickUp to be the bad guy, if you will, or be mm -hmm. the boundary setter with clients or, or team members, um, right. team members, we have, we have a team management hub and they have to fill out forms weekly, monthly, quarterly. It keeps them accountable for what they have chosen to work on. And if they don't get it done, I'm not the one that's micromanaging them. ClickUp is. Right. And so I've taken myself out of it. And it's to the point too, where we barely even have team meetings because we don't need them because mm. my team is so like our systems are so like well-oiled machine. Our SOPs are completely done. Like for every single task, we have that they fill out forms. There's very little questions. Like they know exactly what they need to do when they mm -hmm. need to do it, how to do it. I don't remember the last time we had a team meeting because <laughs> it's just, they, they know what they're doing, you know? Right. Exactly. And, and I will say my virtual assistant, I just got a new one. She started less than a month ago Uh huh. and she doesn't need anything from me. It's just, wow. Yeah. Because it's... all of these things are here for her. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One question I have, because I've worked with enough coaches, uh, to know that Many of them are not used to using a project management tool. How do you advise coaches, business owners, whatever, to get into the habit of getting away from maybe a written to-do list that's in a notebook or something that's in their head? Or oftentimes I see, uh, I see business owners using their calendar to mm. keep track of tasks, how yeah, do you up. advise them to transition to a project management tool? So I always tell them, especially for the paper and pen, um, to still write it, but mm -hmm. then take it one step further by putting it in your project management tool, assigning it to yourself and giving it a due date. Because mm -hmm. when you write it down on that notebook, 
there is no way to remind you. There is no right. way to like say, Hey, this is due today. There is no, like, this is actually for you and not a team member. Um, and also I'm notorious for once I flip the page of the notebook, mm -hmm. I don't go back to it. <laughs> <laughs> So if you, if you have a list that's like more than, you know, one page, or if you have, if you have this, you know, brain dump every single day, it's just going to be this overwhelming thing of tasks. And the other thing I've noticed is when you do that to yourself, your mind thinks that you have to do all of those tasks mm. that day. Yes. Which is absurd. You don't yes. have to. And it's overwhelming. Yes. So if you put it into your project, you could still do that. Still do that brain dump if you want to, mm -hmm. but put it in your project management tool, assign realistic due dates, right? Because if you put a, if you put a thing on there saying like, you know, do all of September social media, that's clearly not going to get done in a day, you right. know? So, so like setting realistic due dates. And then also there are some business owners that I have found that just don't like being in their project management tool. Mm-hmm. So what I recommend to them is they can use a Slack integration and they can dump tasks inside Slack and Slack will actually put them into ClickUp with their team members assigned and all that kind of stuff. Because I know a lot okay. of business owners love using Slack to like dump a bunch of stuff in there, but take it one step further again, integrate it with ClickUp mm -hmm. so that those tasks are being created. Your team is not trying to search and scroll through Slack, trying to find tasks that you gave them Oh my gosh, last what a nightmare. Week you know, those things. Um, there's also an integration with your email. You can create tasks directly out of your emails mm -hmm. um, with the extension on Google. Mm -hmm. And so I highly recommend that too. Um, being if you are emailing tasks or if you're emailing yourself things that you need to remember to do, take it one step further and put it into ClickUp and you can create the, you can create the task right then and there um, on your email screen. It's not like you have to go into ClickUp to do it. Right. And so I am a firm believer in like not doing any of that, but I know that when you are trying to transition, it's not just something you immediately are like, okay, here I go. You know, right. like you have to, you have to build yourself self up to that. Um, we also have some rules in my business where we're not allowed to give people tasks outside of ClickUp. And so if I were to like Vox one of my team members or send them a Slack or an email saying like, hey, I need this done, they have the um, permission to email me back or send me a message back saying, please put this in ClickUp so that it gets done. I like that because mm -hmm. I, <laughs> I can say as a business owner that I do a lot of communication by Voxer. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot that happens. Can you do this? Review this document. They drop a, you know, a yep. Google Doc into, into Voxer. And it can become very overwhelming. Yeah. I mean, just very. I, I, I will tell you that all of my <clears throat> management of, of tasks is online. If I did not have ClickUp, I would be so so stressed out. Yeah. Because I literally live and die by that tool. And exactly. I think what I really like about it is kind of like what you said, it enables you to put things in with realistic due dates mm -hmm. and it gets it out of your head so that you don't have to worry about it. I know I can rely upon ClickUp to say, Hey, here are your tasks that you need to do today. Mm -hmm. And yes, I may have to make some mental decisions like, okay, realistically, I probably am not going to get that done today. And it's not probably a high priority. So let me delay that due date. Yeah. And I know it's going to pop up again. So I don't have to use that, that mental Mm -hmm. that mental bandwidth to remember like, Oh my God, I still got to do that. I still, I, I have yeah. to remember to do that. ClickUp is going to remind me. Right. I also want to mention too the people that love like Google calendar, like looking at calendars, ClickUp has a calendar view where you can literally drag and drop your tasks and like plan. So I actually, that's actually how I work weekly. So I have a okay. weekly calendar view. I connected my Google calendar so I can turn that on and see it in ClickUp. Mm -hmm. And so it has my meetings 
And then I can drag and drop my tasks throughout my week. So I'm realistically planning my week and not saying I'm going to get these 20 tasks done today, even though I also have five meetings. Right. Like, right. Because the days that I have actually today, I have, I think three meetings. I have a dentist appointment. Like I'm not doing any tasks today at all. Right. Zero. Mm -hmm. Because that's unrealistic for me right. to try and plan that around all of these other things. And so even if you love Google Calendar, you can do Calendar View in ClickUp. Like ClickUp allows your – what I one of the biggest things I love is ClickUp has figured out that everyone's brains work differently in their – in how they work. And so they have created all these different views for you to use. Um, so if you love Calendar View, you can do that. If you love List View, you can use that. If you're really into that board view where you drag and, you know, drop things throughout mm -hmm. the process, you can use that. There's just, they thought of everything and right. they allow any type of brain to visualize something and actually work. Right. So I can say from being a ClickUp user that it is very complex and it, there is so much that it can do. So I agree with Casey that it can be very helpful to hire an expert to help you at least get it set up so that it is organized and efficient for you. So Casey, tell us, how do you work with clients? Yeah. Um, so I work with clients in a few different ways. And one of my, my mission is actually to meet clients where they're at in their business. So, mm -hmm. um, we have templates, we have a course, we have VIP days, we have VIP weeks, mm -hmm. we have audits. Um, and then we also have maintenance support as well. So once, if, if we were to come in and set up your click up on a VIP day or week, we also offer after the fact a monthly management package okay. where we will come in and build out projects for you or manage a project for you or build out a new, like if you're like, oh, I really want to get some team stuff set up. Like we can do that in this maintenance package for you as well. Okay. Um, so we have, I have an array of things because I really want people to use ClickUp. Right. Yes. <laughs> I really want them to like, just get their feet wet, you know, and, and, or if they're at the point where they're like, I have three team members, I can't use a template, you know, like that I'm past that. That's where we're talking about VIP days or weeks or depending on what your, um, what your needs are. Mm -hmm. Um, but the biggest thing is DIY or hiring, like get a project management tool set up. Um, your team will thank you. Yourself will thank you. Um, just so you don't have to live off of sticky notes that are collecting dust and notebooks that you can't find anymore. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Any, uh, any, yes, it does. It looks like you have a freebie called a click up roadmap. Yes. Tell us what that is. Yeah. So it's a 10 step roadmap that you go through. Okay. And we get your, the bones of ClickUp set up for you. So we talk about like the business management side of it, of internal, and then it also goes through like your client side of how you can set that up to manage it. Um, so it's 10 steps. I, um, I love that thing. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> I've, I've given it to people and they're like, I can't believe you don't charge for this. <laughs> I think um, I'm going to have to go download this. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really good. Um, lots of examples in there. Lots of like great um, aha moments in there for people while they're building out their ClickUp um, to really, like I said, get your feet wet, get started and really see some potential that ClickUp has to offer you. Awesome. All righty. Any other things that you feel are like worth mentioning when it comes to systems and or ClickUp? make them a priority. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's probably one of the biggest pieces that business owners ignore or think they're not important. Um, until, like I said, you're crying on the couch because your business is like so overwhelming and you're right. burnt out and you just want to close the doors. I can guarantee if you had systems in place and SOPs in place, you wouldn't be feeling that way. I agree. 100%. I yeah. agree. So let's, uh, let's end uh, today's uh, episode with something fun. Tell me about a TV show, a book, or a podcast that you're currently binging. Um, 
Well, I watch the TV show Friends every single day. <laughs> okay. All right. That's an um, old one, but still I know, a goodie, right? I know. It's it's my favorite. I watch it every day. Um, I'm in a book club. I'm in two book clubs, though, and we just read two books, which were really good. Uh, one of the books we read was Find Her. Find Her. Okay. I can't remember who it's by right now, um, but it's like a thriller, and it was very good. Um, definitely keeps you on your toes if you like that kind of okay. suspense. Okay. Um, yeah. So but friends, and then we read all sorts of different books. So yeah. awesome. So thank you so much, Casey, for, for being here. And guys, I totally, totally, totally urge you to get your systems in place. Um, I, you know, because I use ClickUp, of course, I am a huge advocate of ClickUp. I've used other project management tools, and I feel like ClickUp is by far one of the best on the market little bit complicated, um, but Casey's here for you to help you get that uh, set up. I just want to say thank you again for, uh, for being here. Thank you so much for having me. That's a wrap on today's episode. Thanks for listening to the Boosting Business Breakthroughs podcast. Want to hear more business breakthrough ideas? I'll be back next week with a new episode to help you grow your coaching business. If you enjoyed listening, make sure you subscribe, leave us a rating, and tell all your coach friends where to find us. Head over to BoostingBusinessBreakthroughs.com to learn more. Thanks for listening, and remember, your next business breakthrough is waiting for you.